is the author of the book of Luke as well as the book of Acts. Amen. 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 Now, the book of Acts also symbolizes the activities of the apostles. Praise God. The activities of the apostles. And we'll talk about some things today, but we'll try to encourage you from this uh, passage of scripture in the name of the Lord. Look at verse 1, Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. It says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour. Say ninth hour. Ninth hour. The hour of prayer. Say the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day. Y'all can imagine some people who y'all see doing that, don't you? Yeah. They, they were sitting down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Say Beautiful. beautiful. That's one of my last nicknames. <laughs> I call it that all the time. <laughs> In order to beg all of those who were entering the temple, when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms or money. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze or eyes on him and said, Look, at us or look on us and he began to give them his attention expecting to receive something from them praise God but Peter said I do not possess silver and gold but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene of Nazareth rise up and walk verse 7 and seizing him by the right hand he raised him up and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. Say strengthened. strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg for money. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. I guess so. <laughs> At what had happened to him. And as the lame man, last verse, verse 11, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together, praise God, and or rather unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wonder. Again, Lord, bless this word today. Lord, bless this this powerful church, God, that you've been moving in this morning, who as the fire has been moving in this place. Lord, bless these precious pastors of this church, and God, continue to elevate this ministry in this kingdom, this part of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to speak from the subject today. This is an acronym, praise God, an acronym. Praise the Lord. Many of us have been in the military or, or are currently serving, you know, we uh, refer uh, to a lot of what we know by acronyms, right? <laughs> I'll give you a familiar acronym in just a moment, but here's one. We want to speak to you today from the word ACTS, ACTS, A-C-T-X, ACTS. And the title of this message today is Ascending Church of the Transcending Saints. God said this to you all. You all are an ascending church of the transcending saints. Say it one more time. You are the ascending church of the transcending saints. Praise God. I'm going to explain all that to you and you'll have a little bit better understanding. Not to have any big words or long words, just simple words. But this is something God gave us. I want to also, the Lord reminded me, uh, He has acronyms all throughout the Bible. All throughout the word. You all know the scripture where it says ask and, and what now? Y'all know the word. Come on, talk to me. You shall be given. Seek. You shall find. Knock. And what? Doors will be open. A lot of times we don't receive from God because we don't ask. Y'all know that, right? We have not because what? We ask not. Well, what's the acronym in that? Ask. You get that? Take that on with you. <laughs> God said, just ask him. Amen. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 tells us, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. God said, just call it. Call on it. Amen. Amen. He'll show you some things. I don't know who that word is for, but the Lord wants you 
praise God, to ask him and talk to him. Amen? Yes. Kadosh is the ascending church of the transcending saints. Again, I want to thank God for my lovely wife. Amen. My real, my blessing from God. Amen. Amen. She's such a blessing and walks with me, prays for me. Amen. Puts up with me when I'm mad. <laughs> but uh, she's such a blessing to me and just loves me. And I thank God for her traveling with me. Amen. Again, we spoke about a little bit about who Luke is. Praise God. He is the author here of the book of Acts. Praise God again. And, and there are many definitions of what the uh, of Acts or what it really stands for. But here's one again. Uh, the activities of the apostles. The activities of the apostles. And as you study or really just read, it's a history book. It's a New Testament history book. Uh, much like what you would read in the Kings or in the Chronicles. Chronicles is more of a repetition of what took place in the Kings. But, uh, but Acts is the New Testament. Uh, history book, say New Testament. Yes. Praise God. And it, it's some interesting history. And some people say, well, it's a little hard to understand. What I tell people sometimes to do is perhaps uh, maybe get a video that'll help you uh, understand what you're reading. You know, so that you can see some word pictures if you can, you know, if you will. Because it'll help you have a little bit more of an understanding of, of what, uh, you know, the, the apostles did. It's, well, there's different other characters throughout the word in the book of Acts and how God led them to do some miraculous things that impact humanity in our day that we live in. Amen? Amen. Because a lot of Christians, uh, I believe, they leave this earth not having known some basic and good stories that we can actually apply to our lives. Amen? Amen. Not only in the Old, not only in the New Testament, but just in some of the history books that are out there. Now, how many of us like to watch? I, oh, I'm not. No one's in trouble. How many of you like to watch Lifetime Movie Network? Yeah, I see some hands raised. How many like watching We? Amen. Yeah. Some of you like watching some of the, the other stations. It's the same thing. And I'm going to pray today with you. Praise the Lord that God encourages you and interests you. Praise the Lord as you read in your own devotional times, just to get to know how He operated in the lives of women and men, powerful women and men of God and children throughout the word. Praise God in the history books of the Bible. It will certainly bless your life in Jesus' name. Let's do a little study for just a little while. We'll, we'll move on. Praise God. Verse 1 says, Now Peter and John, they were going to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. Now, the ninth hour of the day was 3 p.m. Praise God. Now, how many of you know what you're normally doing around 3 o'clock? You normally saw us probably looking at the clock saying, yeah, it's about time to go home. <laughs> Not, not too long from now, I'll be going home, praise God. But they were going to the temple at the ninth hour of the day. And so this was a time that they set forth to go and to pray. And so that's one thing God wants us to do as his disciples, praise the Lord. He wants us to have a set time aside for us to pray. Now some of you may say, well, I don't have time to just get in the posture to pray. You can walk and pray. Yeah. Praise God. You can, praise the Lord, serve God at work. You can pray. And some people say, well, I can't pray while I'm eating. <laughs> but you can pray while you're driving. That's one time I do a lot of my praying. That's one time God speaks to me, Pastor Gary, like nobody's business. Because it's a relaxing time for me. Amen. Uh, it really does. God can speak to you while you're cleaning your home or some other things, washing your car, washing clothes. God has a way to uh, get to us, praise God, to speak to us. But whichever way that you spend time with the Lord, continue to do so on a consistent basis. And what will it do? It will continue to increase your spiritual ears so that you can hear God speak to you. Amen. Amen. And that there will, there will never be any confusion. Praise God. That was part of one of the lyrics in the Psalms the praise team did. Amen. We've been confused, amen? But there are times that the Lord, he wants you to continue in your walk, praise God, to continue to have that time set aside for prayer, amen? And as we develop that time in God, what is God doing? He's causing an intimacy, amen, to develop between you and him. Just like many of us are in relationships. In order for those relationships to blossom, what, what do you have to have? You have to have some intimacy, time to get to know, Amen. I heard someone say, uh, time uh, for you to learn, or rather get into me. 
Are you getting this? Intimacy. Amen. And, and get into my head, get into my heart. And I thank God when I went through a situation long, you know, so many years back when I met my wife, I didn't, I wasn't really trying to open up. Praise God. And I was kind of afraid to do that. But she had some questions that really helped me understand the pain that I was going through in my own life. And what God did, he began to heal me through that. And yet, uh, you know, I fell in love with my nurse. <laughs> but the, the, where's the woman of God that was speaking to you last night? I call her a prophetess. Praise God, that's who she is. Uh, but uh, uh, she is a great strength to me during some of the darkest hours of my own life, including the loss of my mother the first of the year. She was there for me. Praise God. And we need people in our lives, if you're not married, to be people of that sort, to be there for you. Praise God. You don't need anyone reciting a whole bunch of scriptures, a whole bunch of this, a whole bunch of that. You just need someone to be there just to listen, just to love you, just to be able, just to vent, to be yourself. Praise the Lord. Now, some folks say, I can't believe they went off like that. I can't believe she did this or said this. Or no, let people be them. Amen. Peter was him, but yet he was still used by God. Amen. Let people be who they are. Don't judge them. Love them past their pain. Love them past whatever they're dealing with. And what will God continue to do with you? God will continue to elevate you as you grow in him. Amen. You are part of the ascending church of the transcending saints. Now let's define that word ascend. You know when you fly on a plane, what do you do? You, 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 you ascend and you descend, right? Uh, ascending, I like that. That's pretty cool when it takes off. I don't like landing though. I, I'm, I'm holding on to stuff like, oh, oh, oh. I don't like flying too much, but it's all right after a while. But, 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 but as we ascend, we go up. And that's what God is doing with this precious ministry, this precious church. He is causing you to ascend to new levels in him that this church never thought it would go to. You are part of the church. Ascending church. Church means ecclesia. Say ecclesia. ecclesia. Which means called out one. Say called out ones. Call out. All right. For our, the, our note takers, that's what it means. You are a, a church that is moving past boundaries. Hallelujah. You are an ascending church of the transcending saints. Transcend means to over exceed. Praise God. You're over exceeding expectations of people. Oh, they're just going to be just another church on the corner. They're just going to be another, you know, praise and worship church or whatever. Or oh, we're a church. Praise God. Or non denominational church. Oh, we have about 30 of them or 60 or 100 of them. You know, 100 of them around. Oh, no, they're just another church. No, no, no. You're transcending uh, beliefs of people in this region. And not only throughout the state, but God is going to elevate you all even on, into the worldview area. Oh, y'all can't see it. You can't see it today. But look at where God has brought you within the last five years. Greater is coming. Amen. The, you know, they say it's a colloquialism, but it's true. The best is yet to come. Just keep praying. Keep loving, keep being diligent, keep on loving, keep on serving, praise God, keep on giving, keep on, you know, serving God in this place, and allow God to continue to allow Kadosh, praise God, to be that church that continues to ascend, that you are the called out ones, you're over exceeding expectations, and the word saints, praise God, means those who leave a legacy. Praise God. You're leaving a legacy. You're an ascending church of the transcending saints. Your reputation will far exceed what others think. They're just more than just a church. Not only are they an organization, but they're a structured, highly structured organization. But they're not only a church, but they're making an impact on the community. They're not only making an impact on the community, they're making an impact within the city. They're not only making an impact within the city, they're making an impact within the region. They're not only making an impact in the region, but also an impact throughout the state. Not only in the state, but you're also going to make an impact throughout the world. 
world. Why? Because God has called you out to be an ascending church of the transcending saints. And continue, even during your prayer times, allow God to speak. Allow God to move. Allow God to deliver. Don't judge each other. Keep loving each other past your pain. Past whatever you've done with, whatever you went through with, even if you put your own self through it, continue to love each other and be the church. And, and, and what will God continue to do? One plus one equals what? He'll continue to keep multiplying and adding to the church. That's what you want, right? You don't just want to be a church. God bless my four no more. There's a whole bunch of those around. Some folks don't want their churches to really grow. Some churches really don't want to grow. They just want to have a church just to say, you know what? We had church. We check the box off. And they have no impact, serious impact, within their communities, within their world that God has called you to be in. God has called you to be here, but he's going to continue to elevate you. Don't be discouraged. When well, Lord, we put so much money in this building, he's going to move you two more times. Why? Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. He's only going to move you. He's going to get, it. He's going to get the glory out of it. That's all. And he already has prepared the next place you're going. There's going to be a whole lot more folks coming. Pray the Lord. Folks said, then y'all can't even imagine who will come. Praise God. They're going to continue to come. I'm speaking prophetically to you. God's going to continue to do it. The finances are going to be there. Why? Because you step out in faith. The people throughout the book of Acts were people of faith. Amen. What does the scripture say? For we walk by what? Faith. Sight. Faith. faith. And then we have some faith a little bit later. <laughs> no, we walk by faith. I don't understand when or how what happened, but I trust God that it will happen. Amen. There are many definitions to faith, praise God. But, but, but that's just one. Uh, uh, and then as you trust God, God will continue to multiply. The best form of advertisement is word of mouth. Yes. 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 Pastor Stroger, God just dropped this in my spirit. He's telling me to tell you all within the next nine months, he wants you to get on television. Yes. In this region. God just said that. Just that quick. Start, I feel an anointing. You sense it, prophet. Uh, uh, I need you. Well, I don't, but this is what God said. He said, tell them now. You can get ready to get on television. Do that. There are people who are getting ready to procure favor on you. Oh, God's on it, 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 it's, it's not going to cost you anything. It's, it's going to cost you something. But it's not going to cost much of what you think. What God is doing, that's the transcending. You're over-exceeding expectations Amen. within your region. Yeah. I don't have it written down. I don't have it in my hand. I don't have no. God said, tell them now to prepare to get on television. You have everything in place. Yeah, you do. You have everything in place. Get on television. And God said, even through your obedience, I'll continue to add to this ministry. Because there are people who know you're here. Oh, that's because those all they just saw here. They did this there. But no, they need to see what God is doing here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see even musicians coming. Something you've been wanting. You ain't told me anything. I see them coming. You know how fickle musicians can be. I am one, but I wouldn't like that. <laughs> no, no. You're going to have some faithful ones who are going to want to be here. You ain't going to have all black musicians either. Amen. Amen. You just say that. Say it. No, you're going to have a mixture of folks. Praise God. Amen. 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 That's what God said. Amen. Amen. Get ready for it. You got to do your research or whoever you use to help you do that. Do what you got to do. If you want to start on a low power station, but that's what God said. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Get ready to do it. Oh, I see some. I see some excitement in here. Yeah, yeah. Oh Lord, I'm gonna call this station. I know somebody over here. I know contact. I see it. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what God said. Amen. 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 Get ready for God to move in this place even greater. Verse two. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb being carried along. Can you imagine this? A lame man. Now, we don't know who he is. We don't know how old he is. But he's a lame 
man, which means what? He can't walk. No, but he's being carried. We don't know if he's a skinny guy, medium-sized guy, guy, big guy. But I just can't imagine, man, this guy's being carried. And he's not a little child. So it says that he's a lame man. And get ready this week for God to send some of you your lame man. Yeah, you're going to have a lame man this week that you're going to interact with. It may be a female, it may be a male, but they're going to have an issue in their life that's not, that's not allowing them to move forward in their life. But with everything that God has given you throughout your own spiritual walk, get ready for God to encourage you to encourage them to come out of what they've been in. But this man has been lame all his life. Some of us have had some lame areas in our hearts all of our lives. But just the right people come into our lives and empower us to yes. go past what we thought we, that we could do. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. It takes that one person in our life to come, who comes in our life to help to change our lives. Even for the better. I don't know, you might be 17, you might be 27, 37, 57, 67, however old you might be, but you may say, well, I, I have not experienced that yet, well, just keep on living. Amen. Because God has his hand heavy on you. God has a blessing with your name on it. That's the song, isn't it? Yeah. Praise God. But it's true. God has an anointing just for you. Not just so that you can say, I'm anointed. Yes. No, but so that God can use you in the kingdom of God and for the betterment of humanity. Hallelujah. Amen. But this man was lame, being carried along. He was lame from his mother's womb and he's begging for money as people entered into the church because he knew that people were coming to give. So he knew that was just the right place to be. When my wife and I we lived in Colorado, we never seen that so much. I mean, we've seen it, but it just seemed like everywhere you look, we come out of our, our home development, we hit the highway, and then we, we go into other areas, it's just in like every corner. But they're especially in front of restaurants, and in front of churches, and now in Arizona where we are, we see it. And, and people are begging for help. Uh, but, 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 but you know, that's just the kind of day that we live in. Again, we don't know who this man is, we don't know his age, we don't know if he really had a consistent job. Doesn't sound like it does. But some people just go along and, oh, oh, somebody has to give them something. But just stop. Give them, you know, a couple dollars. A few dollars. I ain't saying give a hundred dollars if you don't have that. Don't, don't try to be, you know, overly spiritual and, you, you know, you, you break your own bank. Praise God. But, but, but use some wisdom with that and, and, and allow God to allow you to be led by the Holy Spirit. And be a blessing because as you give, God will give back to you. Amen? Amen? Why? Because we're the church. Amen. Amen. Church is more than just the building. Yes. Yes. It's more than just our walls. Praise God. Y'all have, have more than four walls, so I can't say four walls. <laughs> no, no. We're more than just a few walls, but we are the body of Christ. Say the body of Christ. Body of Christ. Yes. Ascending church of the transcending saints. And so he's been doing this all his life. You can certainly say he was born this way. He was. You ever heard somebody say, oh, they were born that way. Well, he was too. Amen. But this man was probably used to being carried around. And there are people that we encounter in our lives who are used to being carried around. People make excuses for why they do the things they do. Why they're in the situations they're in. Well, it's always been this way. And he's had such a hard life. And she's had such a hard life. And you know, no. Sometimes I understand that. But now it's time to improve. Amen. I'm reminded here in the book of Acts. There's a verse of scripture uh, that says, For once God went in ignorance. But now he's requiring men everywhere to repent. Repent is a Greek word for metanoia, which means to alter or to change one's mind. Something we need to change. Amen. And so our approach to the church and how God desires us to not only, uh, you know, serve him in the church, but God wants us to live better. Praise God. Serve better, give better. But he also wants us more than anything else. I want you to learn how to love. 
better. Amen. That is a, a gift or fruit, rather, of the Spirit that is very deficient throughout the body of Christ. We don't love consistently like we really should. Love is what? It's an action word. Say it's an action word. You can tell me all day you love me, but until you tell me, but until you show me, I don't know if I should believe you. Oh, I love everybody, but you're gonna give one dollar to somebody to help them. Amen. Come on now. Don't get, don't get defensive. Don't get convicted. I'm just trying to help you realize that God wants to increase you in your life so that you're blessed, so that some doors open. But many of us, we drive and walk right past opportunities to be the church. Because sometimes we can be so much in a hurry to get the church that we forget to be the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? And so, uh, you know, sometimes we can make excuses for folks. And, you know, okay, I understand that for a while. But God wants us to help these people to come out of where they've been in. Amen. Even if you are a referral source, that is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's outlined in the book of Romans chapter 12. See, many people just define the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, to, uh, uh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But the motivational gifts of the Holy Spirit are listed in the book of Romans chapter 12. The gift of being resourceful. Praise God. You're your you're referral source. You know, that's a gift. Teaching is a gift. Loving is a gift. Hospitality is a gift. All those are gifts of the Holy Spirit that are listed there in the book of Romans chapter 20. Praise God. And so every Christian the Holy Spirit is saying, even in this building, every Christian has a gift of the Holy Spirit. Yours might not be prophetic gift. Yours might not be word of knowledge. It might not be word of wisdom, but you have a gift to, excuse me, serve. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You have a gift to serve. And so as you operate in your gift of serving, what will God do? He'll continue to mature the gifts that he's given you. And as you continue to grow in God, the, the God lets us know, as we continue to grow in him, he gives us new revelation. Amen. Throughout your Christian walk, throughout your life, as you continue to grow in him, he'll continue to give you new revelation. He'll continue to help you understand who you are. Especially when you pray. That's one reason a lot of people don't pray because God shows us a mirror of our hearts. A mirror of ourselves. And we don't like what we see. Oh, prayer, prayer time tonight. Seven, eight, four time. Fellowship, oh, church pack. What God wants you to realize that even as you serve under the leadership of your pastors, when you come out to pray, you will begin to learn and understand the pastor's heart. The vision of your pastors. What God wants to use this ministry to do to impact this local region, city, the world. As you come out to pray, you get to learn even more of who they are. Because you may joke and laugh here and there. You think you know but now you get to know them more in the spirit when you come out to pray. And as you continue to pray by faith and thank God by faith, oh, not God, I hope you do it. No, no, no. God, we thank you by faith that you're going to whatever it might be. As you come together collectively and you have an excitement in doing it, it's something that you faithfully do. Because at 3 p.m. each day, Peter and John, what did they do? They went to the church Amen. to pray. Are you, saying, are you getting this? Yes. As you're faithfully doing this, God will be faithful to you. Amen. That loan that you couldn't get six months ago, now you can get it. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Credit may still be the same score, but, but, but God may give you favor with the loan officer. I don't know who I'm talking to in this building, but, 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 but God said, as you be faithful to him, he will be faithful to you. Amen. Are you getting this word today? Amen. Is it encouraging you? I'm trying to move forward. Verse 3. When he saw Peter, this is the man, and John about to go to the temple, let's just say church, he began asking to receive some money. And so it began to make his day. He had some hopes of receiving something. He said, oh, oh, oh. Let's just imagine, just for a moment, we're not taking away from the scripture, we're just imagining for a moment. Let's just imagine that, 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 that he's so excited to see you. He has some hope of receiving something from you. 
just about, oh my God, I see somebody new. I see somebody new. I see somebody new. Uh, uh, can you give me something? Yeah. Now, I was to make you laugh when I first got saved. You know how we get when we first get saved. We want to just spread the word of Jesus Christ around the world. And I remember when I was 19 years old, I'm so excited, I'm on fire. You know, oh God. And I ain't had no money one night. I was a college student that time before I went in the military. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I was going to get a hot dog. You know, I was hungry. You know, it was about 10 o'clock. I finished the study. I was still hungry. You know, you have a high metabolism when you're young. I ain't got that now. <laughs> but uh, it's 45. But, but I, I remember. I, I remember it one night. And the man, he looked, he looked at me like, oh, can you give me something? I ain't got nothing. But I had a trap in my jeans. I should have done that. Some of you did that on the way home. I was too spiritual, y'all, to be a blessing. I could have given that extra three dollars I had. Don't <laughs> escape an opportunity to be a blessing to someone by being so spiritual. We can, y'all, you've heard this say, we see we can be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly what? Good. Praise God. But, but he was expecting to receive something. And so Peter, he was a disciple, praise God, of Jesus, praise God. And, you know, he, he knew, you know, he knew who he was. And he had a reputation of mouthing off all the time. Y'all know Peter, don't you? He denied Jesus who? How many times? Three times. Yeah, you know, that's who he was. So we'll talk a little bit even about John in just a moment. But, but Peter is known to be an impetuous person. You know, he, he acted very quickly. He cut off Malcolm's ear. He cut off the brother's ear. Y'all remember that? Jesus said, oh, Peter, Lord, Jesus, I, oh, my God. Pick the man's ear, put it back on. <laughs> he was that kind of person. He meant well. Uh, but you're not going to mess with my Savior. Just went off his Y'all remember? Yeah. Some of us are like that. My wife says that she's like that. And to a degree she is. In a good way. Not a bad way. That's because she has protective instincts. Praise God. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but sometimes it got Peter in some trouble. Oh, amen. But, 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 but now that's some of the personality of Peter. Alright. But now Peter was also instrumental in getting the church started. Amen. He was evangelistic. Ooh. He was bold. Yeah, he was a bold man. You have pastors who are bold in teaching and leading and being a blessing and impacting the community and the world at large. But what happened when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost? How many were added to the church? 3,000 souls were added to the church. Do you see Kadosh having 3,000 folks? I do. Y'all bet on your way. Yeah. It's, going to, it's going to happen. Yes. And I, I, I don't want to get too ahead of myself and what God gave me to speak to the pastors this morning. Uh, and even some last night, because I could have kept talking, but God said, no, your spirit is subject to you as a prophet. So he said, don't tell them everything. I want you to reserve this for tomorrow. But, but get ready for pastors to be excited to want to learn how did God do this for you? Because he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to draw them to you. Who? Many times people disdain, I hate to say it, disregard. Amen. God raises them up and does mighty works through them. Y'all no, ain't never called nobody no problems. Not, you know, but, but fault makes it well. Who are they? Who are they? Who's your nose? Are you getting this? Yeah, I see it. God wants you to see it. We can come in here and have our church every Sunday, every week, you know, Bible study. But God wants you to follow your pastors as God gives them visions for this ministry. And don't be surprised if God continues to multiply the dose. We may have to go to the east side. We may have to go to the south side. Well, God can't do it. Every ministry that you raise up is not going to stay here. Some of you want a commission to be passed up on it in their own right. And who's to say? That they won't be faithful. I feel such a strong yes, yes. I feel God's presence so strong. My God. Yes. Yeah. Oh my, oh my, oh my. This is just 
a wonderful building. This is not the end. Greater is coming. Amen. But who's to say that Peter, after he was rebuked, or rather Jesus rebuked the spirit on the inside of him, and then six months later he's now the bishop of the church. <laughs> and then when Peter was running his mouth, you know, after a while, James, the half-brother of Jesus, who wrote the book of James, uh, who was actually the bishop over Jerusalem, he had to help Peter. Now, wait a minute, he needs some wisdom in this area. He can't be too excited. Yeah. You know, he helped to take up many offerings to help the, the governing church in Jerusalem to survive. Because that church over exceeded the church in Jerusalem. Isn't that amazing? Get ready for God to use Kadosh in mighty ways that you never thought God could do. But John here is known as beloved disciple. Say beloved. beloved. He's the closest guy to Jesus. Now, how, now, now, for those who were in the who, who were in the Air Force here, y'all know about what's called the top three, right? That's the master sergeant, the the, the senior master sergeant, and the chief, right? All right. Well, you, you have Peter, James, and John. Amen. Uh, well, uh, Peter was the master sergeant. James was the senior. <laughs> uh, but John was the chiefest. Why? Because he was the close one to Jesus. He's the one who even, perhaps, we don't know, but it's not recorded that Jesus relied on. If he would entrust uh, John to watch over his mother, he says, listen, behold your son, but also behold your mother. He was the closest to Jesus. So Jesus, or rather John here, is with Peter. He's a little bit more uh, well-established in not only who he was, but also in wisdom. And so God, he does that in our lives. He sends some Peters and he sends some Johns to help us to move forward in the dreams and the visions that we have to be an impact on the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so, now, these two disciples of Jesus, a no-nonsense person, that's Peter. He ain't taking no mess. Mm, he ain't have time for it. Nope. He ain't have no time for it. He would deal with you. <laughs> yeah, that's what he would do. And the life coach it was John. A little bit more wisdom, a lot more love and compassion. I tell people as, as they first get saved, and y'all, I trust y'all have done it here too in Kadosh. Uh, you know, when you take them through discipleship classes and training, start reading the book of John. And then uh, uh, as you put first, second, and third John together, you, 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 you look at the, the language, it's the same language. By this time, John is in his 90s when he writes first, second, and third John. He's a lot more established, and he gives you principles on how to love people, how to take care of yourself, how to love God. Amen. Amen. Tell people to start learning that stuff. Don't give them stuff that they don't know nothing about. Amen. Start uh, uh, helping them to understand the love of God. Amen. But it was 3 o'clock now. They went to the temple as what they would normally do. Verse 4. But Peter, along with John, they fixed the eyes on him and he said, look on us. Or look at us. Another version says, look on us. Peter and John, they took the time. Say time. time. Many of us, that's something we don't do. Take the time. Praise God. Praise God. Take the time with some people in your life. Don't be in such a hurry to accomplish some things that we don't take the time. Because that's, that's what God will do. God will redeem the time in your life as you take the time. Praise God. Where you get this word? Mm -hmm. There are times in our lives that God will want us to inconvenience ourselves for the about to be saved. Jesus mm said, -hmm. yeah, some of us think. Now get that. There's time that God wants us to inconvenience ourselves for those who are about to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Get out of our agendas to be a blessing to someone who needs Jesus in their life. Inconvenience yourself. Well, all right, I, I, I used to do this while I got through this. No, no, no. Be a blessing because that's what? You may be the only person that they may ever listen to. We're, made, we're the only Bible that many people will read. They watch our lifestyle. They watch how we act at work. They watch how we drive. 
So we're going to know that, y'all. I, I, I had somebody one time say, well, thank God I, I saw you pass through the light. And I, uh, you know what? I just knew you was going to do, do this and do that. Now, I ain't the greatest driver. My wife will tell you, I like her driving. I'll, I'll ride with her any day. But, but sometimes folks will make me want to drive off and do something and cut them off. But what if I had done what I initially wanted to do? I may have never seen them come back to church again. Are you with me? Uh, I'll just say for instance, I once once here the the the, the uh, what was it Lowe's? I think Lowe's. Yeah, yeah. I went to get something for the house once, you know, and and, and the, the 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 lady over uh, overpaid me. She, you know, she gave me extra money back. Somebody in the church I didn't even know. Cause you know I wear some glasses too, so I can't always see way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank God the brother said, Pastor, you know what? I saw you and I'm so glad that you didn't take that money. Guess what? That man may not even be, you know, may, may not even serve Jesus today. We never know who's watching us. Are you getting this? Are you getting this word? Ascending church of the transcendent saints. But these two apostles, they were blessed, and they blessed this lame man. Verse 5. They began to give her attention, expecting to receive something. Amen. And he rather began to give them some attention. He wanted something. He said, I want some money from you. Can you help me? Can you help me? People of this sort sometimes uh, never have their needs satisfied. But God wants us to have wisdom too. Because not everybody has a need. Some of them have cars better than you. I've seen it, y'all. I saw it in Smithfield. One had a Mercedes Benz. We went out to eat one time. There was a restaurant out there. I forget if it was one of the restaurants. And I, my wife went and I went up and we said, uh huh. Mm -hmm. So God wants us to have some wisdom too. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. We're going to pray in just a minute. Verse 6. But now Peter said, I don't possess silver and gold. But what I do have, he says, listen, I'm giving this to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Rise up and walk. Give them something that they least expect. Listen to them for a moment. And allow the Holy Spirit as you continue to allow your intimacy to be developed in him. To lead and guide you. Because Jesus said in John, I will lead you and guide you in all truth. Rather, the Holy Spirit will do that. Praise God. The comforter. Amen. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit. So God used Peter as a leader here. In this verse, he's referring to his financial status. And so uh, I love how Peter in the second part of this verse says, listen, I don't have anything to give you. But what we do have... We give to you in the name of Jesus. Get up, man, and walk. Sometimes you have to challenge people. You've been in this state so long. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and do something different. Do something different that you've never done before. I want you to go a different route that you've never gone before. I want you to try something. Matter of fact, you know what? I know someone who's hiring somebody. And they need somebody just like you. Be that referral source, perhaps. Praise God. Be a blessing. Because that might be the best gift that person has ever had. Yes. And allow God to increase this part of the kingdom. Kadosh, life ministries. Yes. Well, do you go to church? Yeah, I go to church. I go to, uh, I go to Kadosh. Oh, yeah, that, that church down there on corporate drive. Yeah. We see them on TV. Oh, yeah. We speak <laughs> You know, I don't think y'all are scared about it. I, I'm just going to say to some of you, I, I don't know anything to be scared about. You can't dress up every Sunday. No! That's, going, that's what's going to draw people here because they're going to see people who are common. Yeah. You don't have to wear a three piece suit every Sunday. Yeah. Lord, I sweat to death in one of those. <laughs> no, no, just be who you are. Keep serving Jesus. Keep loving God. And when people see people who look like them, yes. dress like them, you wear jeans in church? I preach in jeans and a shirt any day if they love me sometimes. Hey! Oh, I want to be a part of that. They're excited. Some folks go to church and they're not excited. But you're excited. We feel the presence of God here. You sense the Holy Spirit moves. There's a mighty anointing of deliverance in this, uh, in this ministry. 
not only delivered spiritually, but of God's word. It's a richness that's here. I know it's here. I see it in the atmosphere. I felt it as soon as I walked in here. Man, this church has grown tremendously. See, many people think growth is just numerical. That's just one way. But you're growing, you're ascending. Hallelujah. The word is causing you to ascend to love that you never thought you would go to. You're moving. You are movers and shakers in the kingdom. And, and, the, and, and the devil is mad. God is shaking his kingdom. My God, you're shaking the kingdom of darkness. Keep on shaking it. Keep on allowing people to be set free. Of all walks of life. The matter who you already come from, what you have, what you don't have, what you drive, what you don't drive, where you live, where you don't live. None of that matters. Just come on in the house. Oh, I feel the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Come on in the house. And let God set you free. We want to love you back to life. First close. Verse 7. And season him by the right hand. It's so meaty in the scripture. Get this. By the right hand, he raised him up. And immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. Peter did this. It's amazing to see how God used Peter given his history. He's an impetuous guy. I'll cut your ear off. You mess with me. I said, yeah, I'll cut you. <laughs> What did he do? He picked him up with his hand. Didn't say John did. Peter did this. The man kept on getting up. And he kept on getting up. And power came into the bones of this man. And God wants you to find your lame man to speak healing into their lives. As you pick them up. As you have the spirit of Peter just in this instance. <laughs> pick them up. Speak some love to them. Speak some encouragement. Be that listener. Praise God. Be quick to do it. Be quick to do it. And God's going to see you in your lame man this week. And I want you to call your pastors and tell them, I found my lame man. I found my lame man. It was this lady, this person. They went through this and they went through that. And God used me to do that. And what will it do? It will encourage your pastors to keep on teaching. Keep on preaching. Keep on praying for you. Keep on loving you. Keep on leading me. Why? Because you're hearing your opportunity to be a blessing to your lame man. He's coming. He's going to be this week. It might be as soon as you leave here. You're going to have your lame man this week. It might be right before you come to church next week, but you're going to have a lame man. Praise God. Get ready for it. Nothing to be afraid of. It's your opportunity to be used by God. And let God multiply you in your life. God may use you to counsel to bring some comfort. To speak life, to be that listening ear in someone's time of need. The reason Peter took the lame man by the right hand is because it was called in that day the respectful hand. He raised him up with the respectful hand. As it was respectful to use the right hand for work purposes. Because it was disrespectful to use the left hand. Because let's just get technical about it. We home folk, right? We're family. You used your left hand for some things that we don't really want to talk about. Can I just leave it at that? Okay. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, y'all looking at me. <laughs> Is he really going to say that? <laughs> and still, the sense of some cultures in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, been over there a few times. So, you know, you don't want to use the right hand in some, in some issues. Praise God. So, he was respectful. Be respectful towards your lame man. Listen to him. They may be mad as hell. Oh, Pastor Cusson, no, I'm not. Hell is a tormented frame of mind. Oh, Pastor Cuss, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pastor. It is. It's tormented. And I know I can speak from experience for many years. I live, Minister Bobby, in hell, in here. In my own self, I lived in hell, promise. I lived in hell in my own mind, never thinking I could measure up to be a blessing to humanity. Why am I even here? I don't know if I have a purpose. What is my purpose? In ministry, didn't know what God was telling me, didn't know nothing. 
confused, hurt, walk around feeling hurt all the time, walk around feeling disappointed all the time, walk around not knowing what, what God was telling you to do, yes, walk around with folks who thought they were more than what they really were. Some of these folks today who I started out ministry with ain't even preaching no more. Not in ministry, don't want nothing to do with the church. That's a shame. 26 years ago, starting a ministry, none of them jokers in ministry no more. Maybe one of them is pastor. But all the rest of them, 17 brothers I started out of ministry with, only one other brother's pastor. My God, the rest of them ain't even say. Ain't that something? Come on, y'all. What about my mother? My, 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 uh, uh, my, my wife's uh, spiritual mother says, you need to start out how you hold out. Y'all know what they're saying, don't you? Thought of how you hold out. Be faithful. But be a blessing to your lame man. And God will bless you. Don't live in torment in your mind. That's what's going to, that's what's, that's how a lot of folks are going to be in hell. See, y'all think it's going to be a lake of fire and probably going to be burning up folks. No, there's not going to be that. It's not going to be that. The burning is going to be in the mind. It's going to mess you up. It's going to be not you. It's not us. Them. Amen. Yeah, the hell is going to be when you knew you should have gone to church and served, served God and applied God's word and you chose not to. Sometimes, you know, you, I'm, 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 some folks plan to say, well, I'm going to do this. And, well, that might be the last time. Come on, y'all. Folk things going to be a lake of fire. Folk going to be all blackened and burned up. No, it's not going to be that. I can do a whole bunch of teaching on that, but I'm, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave a few pastors to teach you. They're good teachers. They really are. I remember y'all talked one night. I came, and y'all was teaching out of Psalm 76 some years ago. I said, Lord, that thing blessed my soul. I said, my God, they went by verse by verse. That's what you and I need. I need some verse by verse teaching. You can preach to me and I'm going to and I'm going to Church, 
Pentecostal churches that are very dogmatic in their teachings. Can't do nothing. Can't go out to the movies. That's a scene. Can't go out with your husband and your wife here or your fiance or, or whoever. You can't do nothing. Can't enjoy the church. Can't go to the meet. Oh, look, that's the devil. Everything ain't the devil. That was that. You didn't even do that. You didn't job on the You blame everything on the devil. Don't stop clowning on the devil. See, I'm speaking by faith. I'm preaching by faith. Amen. God was trying to see me by faith. Amen. Amen. He entered here, walking, leaping, and praising God. He may have been clapping off me. That's all right. He's in church. Y'all clapping like this, and he may do trying to catch it. Which prayer? Which prayer? Angelos, which means good news. Angelos, which is the angels, as angels spread God's spirit in the temple, which is here. I see it even more in here. Hallelujah. He's moving. And he's going to do some great things here. You're willing to embrace folk who will smell like uh, uh, cigarettes, alcohol, throw up on them. So it's like,
how does a person suffer from being laid off of their job? Had no food to eat. Had nothing. And within a year's time, perhaps, God totally trans uh, transferred their life to a new life. My God. All because you and I took that time out to be a blessing to someone that we don't know how to take the time out to be a blessing to. Last verse 11. And after the lame man, which was healed, he held Peter and John. He came to the gosh. Faithfully. That's what that means. He held him. Which means he, he comes faithful. Or she comes faithful. Yeah. All the people ran together to them in the porch. That's Solomon's porch. That was just a place of gathering. As they came for prayer in the temple. This man was joyful. He came to Solomon's porch, which is an eight feet, eight hundred feet porch. And it was in the outer court there. And they just hugged each other and they fellowship. Those beautiful marble areas that they had in that room. Which was really called a recreation center. You're not just a church. You're not just having church, but you're doing more things to be a blessing to your community. Amen. Amen. Let this word bless you. Yes. Get encouraged.